Annette's in the house. Hi. Hello. Hi. What you got for me? So we were talking about the um, emotional expression. So this mm -hmm. one that I had been dating for about four months, I gave him about four months, but I noticed with him, it was a lot of that expression of anger toward people. Like he's an angry driver and such. And yeah. so, um, <clears throat> he would talk about maybe people from work, people are stupid, you know, things like that, but he was never that way toward me. Okay. So my fear was that it would eventually turn to be toward me. Okay. So, What's your question then? So that was, you know, what we were going to talk about as far as like I shared with him the list from the Hoffman process um, okay. that list of emotions that you had recommended. And when I talked to him about that. He was very receptive to what I had Feeling. to say. He wasn't defensive or anything like that. And he just said that he withholds his emotions because of, you know, his past uh, you know, trust from past relationships and such. Okay. And so so what, sure. so what's your question? So could he come around and change if I gave him more time? Okay. So by the way, uh, first off, I'm going to answer that question, but I just want to share with everybody something that just happened in our dynamic. I asked you that question. What's your question three times? And it wasn't until the last time you actually answered it. So the, my point is, and this tends to be the case with women as much as men as well, is that you were sharing thoughts in your head. But when I was trying to get granular with you, what you did is share the story. Okay. So, I, and I just want, this is not to out you, Annette. This is just to illustrate something that happens all the time. Women oftentimes complain about communication, but, but many times you are guilty of not being clear in your communication. That's what I wanted to share with you. Okay. Coming back to your question. So it's interesting. I have a dear friend of mine. She's married and her husband is an angry driver. It's just, he's just, it's, it's something. And, and she doesn't feel safe when she's driving with him. It's a very contentious situation between them. And, and so I, I understand that experience. And then this man you're talking about, how long have you dated him or been dating him? Four months. Four months. And have you guys been physically intimate with one another? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to get some context. Okay. And how far apart or how close do you two live together? Just about an hour. Okay. And then in this four months, how many times have you physically seen him? Oh, many. He's very good about giving his time. So. Okay. Um, okay. The week is I just need context. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to women say something to me, Jonathan, I've been in a relationship for six months. And then I say, how often do you see each other? He goes, I haven't met him yet. And I'm like, uh, okay. Well, like I say that, you know, in the months that I've been watching your program, I'd like to think that I'm actually, you know, trying to exercise, you know, the advice that you give. And so that's well, what, why, well, thank you. And I'm grateful that you do that. But why I just shared what I did is the word relationship has different meanings to people. So context mean, is, is really hugely important. That's why I'm asking you, how often do you see each other? Have you had sex? Because I need the context because this word relationship is nebulous because Hooking up is a relationship, situationship is a relationship, casual is a relationship, serious is a relationship, living together is a relationship, married, they're all different forms and how one person views it can make a difference. So coming back to his attitude towards people, he, he kind of views people as stupid. You said something along those lines early on. So he has a level of contempt. He has this level of road rage. And then you're going, wow, could that ever turn on me? very fair that you might not feel safe. Okay. And so your question is, is this something he can evolve on? Well, first it takes radical awareness to make changes in one's life or to grow. Okay. So it takes radical awareness. Now in particular case, um, with the road rage, I think in the case of my dear friend, she had significant conversations with her now husband about how she 
she feels when he's because she doesn't feel safe when that happens. She doesn't feel like he can protect her in these moments. Or she doesn't feel he can protect her in these moments because he might just lose control of the car because he's so angry, you know, going, oh, you, 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 flipping you off, all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so she expressed herself and he is improving. He and by the way, it's it went from like a 12 to a six now, okay? And they've been together for seven years, okay, just to give you some context. So it's it's dropped dramatically, but it rears its ugly head on occasion. And they've happened to occasionally drive 400 miles every once in a while to go from Arizona to Los Angeles, and it'll, it'll rear its ugly head. But they've had conversations about it. He didn't dismiss her, and he's taking to heart that she doesn't feel safe and she expressed that in that nonviolent way, in that compassionate way. Now, his contempt for other people. Sadly, I can relate to that. I, I, I tend to have a lot of contempt for stupidity in the dating marketplace. I, I, I am sometimes, I'm, I'm aware of this righteous indignation I have for what I perceive as stupidity. Now, I'm aware of it. I do my best to catch myself when it comes out of my mouth. And sometimes I, I've witnessed myself just completely blind to it. And when it's drawn to my attention, I usually, I'm just aware that I'm like, oh, I'm in righteous indignation. I'm in contempt. Boy, do I want to shift into compassion. But again, it takes radical awareness to reach this state. My suspicion is he's not aware. And I will say this, contempt for others has a toxic effect to the people around them. That's how I feel, yeah. Look, bringing me down. Yeah. yeah, without a significant corresponding dose of gratitude. If there isn't a significant, like in other words, it's the balancing effect because without gratitude to shore that up, to the receiver, you being the receiver on the other end, that will be toxic. And the challenge is now that you've been together four months, you physically bonded with him, you happen to like him, you probably have care for him. There's a lot of good factors within him. Exactly. And if he's not willing to grow, it will end up eventually being the demise of your relationship because toxicity is, and it just, it's like, it's like a, a tiny pipe in your, in, you know, the pipes in your home, right? There's a little tiny bit of rust forming and it's just little by 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 little, by little, by little then it'll function eventually erupt. It's so minuscule that it doesn't affect the taste of the water or the, the circumstance, but just enough to, as a matter of fact, let's use, let's use rust in a water pipe. That poison will effectively cause you to get sick. Yes. And I'm feeling that already at four months because I feel like I have a lot of joy normally, you know, and, and yeah. all of a sudden feeling like, you know, just doing the simplest things, going out to dinner, like my joy can be zapped because he's frustrated about Going on I, I got to tell you, being around negative people, complaining people, um, wound, you know, that, that I, I've been in circumstances like that and it just wears on you. And so <laughs> I want to share something personally, but then it's too private. Let me just say that I have people like that in my life and I set gigantic boundaries, but I'm not sleeping with them. Right. You know, I got, the boundary is I just don't see you for a period of time. And then when I see you, there's a little bit of toxicity and then I pull away. When someone is that habitually, it becomes torture after yeah. a while. And I don't know if there's any way to solve that. I mean, I would express your feelings and really practice gratitude. And maybe if he's willing to do the work, like I'm aware of my righteous indignation, okay? I'm aware of it. I, it's called stupid righteous Jack. That's a character within my character of being a human being that I'm aware of. It's funny because my son and I, son will point it out to me sometimes. I'm like, oh my God, stupid righteous Jack. At least that awareness mitigates it when it pops up on occasion. But for me, it's occasion. I'm not in constant 
contempt. If someone's in constant contempt, it is just draining. And to extend the question, like at what point do you realize that you're just trying to change a person? And it's like- See, it's not your job. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Annette. It's not your job to change a person. It's their job to recognize their limitations and then choose to grow from it. But you can say, look, at I would have a very sincere conversation. First off, I need you to know something. I feel unsafe when you are having road rage. And if he gets defensive to that, then it's probably misalignment. In addition, you might bring up how you feel when he has contempt. And if that's not something he's willing to work on, then you might say, you know what? I've got enough data in this relationship because you're going to roll the dice. And, you know, it's, it, it's, believe me, people have to want to grow, to grow. We're not asking someone to change. He is who he is. But does he want to grow past this? Because it doesn't serve him either. Neither of those spaces serve him. Exactly. So true. And, you know, for the same thing, like he's been through several relationships and I'm like, and he says to me, why are you, you know, watching dating coach podcasts and such? And I'm like, because for 17 years of being single, I figure I need to learn a thing or two. (laughs) So... And I so I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to him right now. I want you to go back to this video. We began chatting around the 50 minute mark. I want you to go back to this video. I'm gonna speak to you, my to him. Okay, you can show him this. Okay, listen. Annette genuinely cares about you. She has deep feelings for you, and she's very interested in exploring a deeper relationship with you beyond the surface, beyond the transactional, something that actually has some roots to it that can go the distance. She has invested this much in you and she's willing to go further. However, I'm sorry, I don't like saying however, but I wanna draw attention to this. There are facets of your personality, particularly when you're getting road upset with other drivers and she doesn't feel safe in this moment and it causes her to recoil. It causes her to not feel safe in this moment and not give herself fully in this relationship. In addition, sadly, you have a wound that causes you to have contempt for people. It's very understandable. The world is crazy. We have a lot of crazy people out there. We have a lot of reasons to feel contempt, but that contempt also is poison just like poison, like rust in a pipe, a water pipe. It will wear on her to the point where she won't feel safe anymore with you. So I'm inviting you to recognize this, just to recognize it, and even try to get to the root of where this wound may come from. It might've come somewhere in your childhood. I invite you to go back deep and go find a way to heal that wound because the reality is, is look, most human beings are different from one another. It's easy to feel contempt, but there's something else you can do as well. You can have compassion. Compassion is the antidote to suffering in many ways because that contempt causes you pain, whether you accept it or not. But compassion is the way that we heal forgiveness and compassion in our lives. And when you do that, you're going to find that this beautiful woman right in front of you, Annette, will open herself up more to you in a way that you've never experienced before. And hopefully the two of you build the deep roots of trust that can can carry you to that point where, God forbid, one of you has cancer and the other is sitting beside you, wiping the vomit from your face because you're going through chemotherapy. You can hold hands together on those final moments with one another because you you actually invested in yourself first and then investing in your partner. And to you, my friend, that's what I say to you. Annette, how did that feel? That, you know, spot on, really, just spot on. So, and um, I think he is capable of going all the way and that sincerity in the relationship. But um, I, at the same time, you're right. It's a safety thing for me, probably back from my childhood and all the yeah. screen back then. And yes, the yelling does make me feel very unsafe. So so I hope you actually show him what we just talked about. And, and to, if you're watching this, sir, my hope is you recognize that I came from a good place. This is not a judgment of you. Because I understand, I and believe me, I understand you. I've been there, okay? <laughs> I've had contempt for people. Believe me, I sometimes get so righteous. I get that. But at the same time, I practice a boatload of gratitude 
to at least come to some level of equilibrium because gratitude is the pathway truly to your heart, to that place that we all, that little kid inside of us that just wants to be loved for who we are. So when we can learn to appreciate all the facets of us, the good, the bad, the ugly, the shadow, all that kind of stuff, when you can become to embrace it, you're gonna find, I hope at the other end for you, sir, some joy, some peace, and some happiness. So Annette, I shared earlier, we human beings don't do a good job identifying our feelings and then articulating it. I hope I helped you with this script or at least, actually this invitation for him to watch it, quite frankly, so the two of you can build the deeper roots of trust with one another. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. All right. Uh, I'm going to give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. Hugs back, Jonathan. Thanks, Thanks back. So Annette just shared something so poignant that I'm going to make a clip from this, okay? So if you're watching this at this point, this is going to be a clip. You find yourself in a relationship with someone who has a bit of road rage. They find yourself in a relationship that's a little, has contempt. We can't change anyone. We can invite someone to grow. We can invite, we can start by expressing our feelings in a way that can be seen, heard, and understood. And that's my invitation for Annette to express herself in a way that can be seen, heard, and understood. And maybe he has the wherewithal to accept it and to embody it and to embrace it and to say, I want to grow past my limitations. Let's hope he reaches that point. If he doesn't, maybe this isn't the right relationship for her. And that's okay too, folks. That's what dating is about. Dating is a vetting process to see if we're aligned with one another. Dating is a vetting process to decide if we can be teammates with one another. Dating is a process where we, where we truly share our life vision for someone. And maybe if two people are aligned in that Venn diagram, they find themselves way to deeper heart-centered connection. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? <laughs> I'd like to hear your thoughts. If it is, post a comment below. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also go to your settings on your phone to make sure that you're notified on YouTube as well. Also, if you wanna connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's links to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's a link to follow me on Instagram to get all the books I recommend. They're all listed below. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I wanna thank Johika and Power Chi and Annette for being brave.